It started out as just a party night. Since then, it's become a cultural beacon within the Los Angeles scene, a home to a lot of people that didn't feel like they could express themselves in other places. Your acceptance, it's your liberation, it's your rebellion. Nightlife has the power to empower, it has the power to inspire people, it has the power to connect people. It has the power to push social issues, issues of equality. We want to be a safe space for that kind of expression. Definitely more than just a party. A club called Rhonda is a nightlife entity where we transform different venues across the globe into the Club Called Rhonda experience as a platform for self-expression. Rhonda is a very powerful feminine persona. Like a mother to us all, but also kind of like your crazy aunt. We just wanted a unified voice in front of us. She's feeling of the golden age of clubbing. Paradise Garage and Stu 54 or Cherry here in Los Angeles. Part of honoring them is to like carry it on and to push it even further. Anybody can go into a club, bring a DJ and call it a party. We wanted to try to give that event an identity to create a community. Greg and Lauren are Rhonda and Greg and Lauren are two people that are very passionate about music and about art. And I guess that's who Rhonda is. Rhonda is reflective of Greg and Lauren's characteristics. We're just a couple of guys that love to party. He had like a 21st birthday that we took over a warehouse space in downtown. That kind of gave us our first taste of doing something. From then we started doing parties at our rooftop loft unit. Super fun for us, not very fun for our neighbors. We shortly got evicted as we were somewhat homeless and we wanted to still continue that feeling. We started looking for venues and the idea of Club Called Ronda started to take shape. I think that moment where we were like, we might be onto something was when we did the very first a Club Called Ronda. That was at this place called Guadalinda. Super shady, but had a lot of personality. They didn't really know us then. It was then, just like, <laughs> yeah, sure, do it. Do you want some strippers there? I'm like, right. Uh, <laughs> it was super, DIY. We basically just rented the space and everything else we filled in. We bought kegs and we had all of our friends DJ and just invited a ton of people. We were never invited back to that place again. We needed our complete own environment. Gregory is gay and I'm straight. The main thing that we wanted to do was have a place where his friends and my friends could come together and we can all be friends. So we are entering the disco. It's a historic restaurant we turned into a in raging, raging nightclub. <laughs> we're very proud to be in Silver Lake doing our thing. I think we're one of the last remaining gay-oriented events in Silver Lake. Right now we're doing 40 shows a year. This party's really good, so when you yeah. have a chance to play Ronda, you always do it. They do something that not everyone's able to do. People are able to let loose. And just the fact that they take a lot of risks musically, yeah. I appreciate that. For me, that's a good party. I started DJing probably when I was nine or 10. I used to sneak out of bed after midnight and go play with my dad's 1200s. My father was a DJ and remixer in the 80s and 90s. That was very interesting to grow up around. I was introduced to nightlife when I was like 14, and I was just sort of discovering who I even was. I mean, I had to really realize that I was gay. I didn't know how to say that or to express that, especially with being at a Catholic school in Orange County. I mean, I found a community through nightlife, a community that I wanted to be part of, now I've made nightlife my real life, you know? Beyond our classic Silver Lake parties, we do a lot of collaborations with museums, historical landmarks, and hotels across Los Angeles. We did an event recently with LA County Museum of Art. 
The Reigning Men exhibit was showcasing men's fashion throughout the ages. Things that sort of pushed the boundaries of what men could and should wear. It was cool to sort of be looked at as an actual art form instead of just like a club. When you come to one of our events, we want you to be able to experience a change in feeling. It's about delivering experiences that are a little bit more profound. The Blasco event is something that we put together. It is one of the most beautiful theaters that I've ever seen. Gorgeous, intricate architectural details that you don't see anymore. It's this gigantic sweeping venue that I always get lost in. The Rondesia pool parties are part of the pursuit of pleasure that we're all about. A lot of that comes through in the summertime in this little slice of paradise we live in called Los Angeles. It's beautiful outside, it's hot outside. The sunshine is something that should be embraced and let people express themselves in a different kind of context. It's a lot of work behind the scenes. We never really stray from what our vision is. We just always sort of try to figure out a way to make it happen. We are in our Rhonda workshop. Here you can see all the props, paints, nails, tools, anything that we might utilize in the club. We basically work on it here and then we bring it out. We can't afford to just like buy all these custom props or rent all these amazing things. We have to figure out ways to make it ourselves. We got like the things that are cased in different color tubing and then we wired it ourselves it winds up looking like a clear neon sign. At night, you know, nobody knows that it's not neon because it's just glowing there in your face in a dark club. Both Lauren and I have been pretty obsessed with Greek culture over our lives. Expanding your sexual horizons and your mind. The only religion that I know that actually pushes them is like a Grecian or a Roman god. We usually work according to when the events are, so we'll probably prep like a week prior. We sit down, we figure out what art direction we want to take with the event. We start building, start painting, and we create. A lot of it is just problem solving, yeah. working as a team, and just putting all of our talents together into making, you know, Rondo what it is. These dusty letters. <laughs> And I built these maybe like six years ago or something. I never really built anything like it before. I basically just got some recommendations from my father, who's also a carpenter, uh, on how to build something like this. I mean, this is just completely DIY. It's, we did it ourselves. About a week ago, David Mancuso died. He pioneered a lot of the sounds that would later become part of like the disco lexicon and the club lexicon. He would set up this really awesome sound system, deck out the ceiling with a bunch of balloons, and just play music that was important to him. So we we're essentially kind of trying to recreate that in our own way. There's been a lot of stories that people have told us over the years where they talk about who they first were when they entered the club and who they later became. My gauge of what is crazy has shifted over the years. I remember early on when I first started going, could never imagine being that free. I found Rhonda about a year into being in LA and Rhonda instantly and immediately changed my life. I felt an awakening. I felt like, okay, this is a place where I know that I belong. It's funny to see people first discover the club and just show up in whatever they would normally wear because they're sort of like timid to go to a nightclub. And it's, it's a weird thing to put yourself out there like that. But by a couple of rondas later, you know, you all of a sudden see the same people trying new things in whatever way they possibly can. You know, the ambiance of the party is, is made by its attendees. There's a drag queen at the door, and that just alone puts a certain vibe to the party. I think at our last big show, we had around 37 people that were just ronda people. Lighting designers, hosts, dancers, door people, production managers. We've been here since about seven o'clock this morning. It's been a long day. It's a really special team, you know. Lauren's brother, Ryan, is an incredible lighting designer. The lights we're hanging right now are red, green, blue orbs. We're hanging them over the DJ, and then they're kind of coming out towards the crowd. I've run the door since the beginning. There's lots of people that will come up and see me, and will just turn around and walk away. I love that. <laughs> you were probably not supposed to be here anyway. Rhonda! We're going to Rhonda! We're going to dance our faces off. Put it on, try it for us, try it. The ambassadors are hosts, basically, at the club. Bam, they have a presence, right? They set the tone, they set the mood. 
They help to influence people with less daring personalities start to go there. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone and put on the last thing you ever thought you'd want your mother to see you in and go to the club and live your life. Brendan is, in a lot of ways, me when I was younger. I first discovered Rhonda maybe three years ago. I had just moved home from San Francisco and I needed a place to put on my heels. The first night that he came to the club, I was like, who is this person? It was like voguing all over the stage, dancing amazingly. Gregory saw me and saw what he saw in himself, I think, when he started Rhonda. Then it just developed and he saw that he could be more comfortable and start to push what he wanted to wear. When we say bring a strong look, honey, I mean bring a strong look. After the Trump win, everybody seemed really, really down for the entire week, including myself. I didn't want to go to a party. But with Rhonda, I mean, there's no stopping it. Also, it just felt like people probably needed a release. I guess we were right. That night, people just showed up in droves. I wound up being really, really proud of what we'd created. It's been that place where I can breathe in this world that's so toxic. I don't know if I'd be alive without it. Inclusive nowadays has sort of become exclusive. I was already an out gay man in high school and I had a lot of female friends. I felt like I could just go and use the women's room with them until I got in trouble for it. So <laughs> we started to ask all the venues if we could change all the restrooms into multi-gender restrooms. I think the point is there is no gender, there is no orientation, it's just love. It's comforting. You feel alive. It's pushing them to be more of whatever they are. There's been strides made in the pursuit of equality. I think at the same time, you're seeing this backlash against that from people who were never cool with it in the first place, suddenly becoming empowered. Ron is not necessarily welcome everywhere. No matter how many strides we think we've made in that space, we're still under attack in a lot of ways. It's armor. It's my shield. It's one of the best parties in America. Yeah. There's nothing really like it. It's more than a brand. It's a movement. It has a really positive message of acceptance and diversity. I really feel like this is a dance sanctuary for those who are marginalized. I think we're interested in both being a refuge for people and a place where they feel comfortable. We throw around this word of safe space often. It really feels that way. You know, you feel safe enough to be who you want to be, to do what you want to do.